we're just gonna give everyone a minute to kind of get into the room, make sure everybody um, is able to join the Zoom class before we go ahead and get started with this little sign making class we're gonna be showing you guys today. We've got some brand new products um, that we're excited to share with you that is setting in Michaels right now. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna give everybody, like I said, a second to, to jump in, um, say, hey, let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we just wanna make sure everybody has a chance to join before we um, get started with some of this awesome new information we wanna share. And so Jesse, I think we're about ready if you want to get started with the class. Okay, cool. Um, so you might have joined us, I think it was last week we we're here in Michael's Community Classrooms um, talking to you about a brand new product we have setting in stores in Michael's right now. Um, and it is called Folk Art Sign Shop. So um, again, this is an amazing new product. If you like um, making signs, you can uh, personalize them. If you like this sort of style of home decor, um, this is the absolute best, most beautiful and simple way to make signs. Um, so we have a brand new line. The bulk of the line um, are these beautiful, what we're calling mesh stencils. Um, so you're probably used to stenciling um, with like a stencil brush and you have to sort of offload your brush and do the pouncing motion and line up your stencils and all of that. Um, and it does take a little bit of skill to do that, um, to keep it from bleeding underneath the stencils and things like that. I know a lot of people get kind of frustrated with stenciling because it does take, take some practice and take some time to learn but these are absolutely foolproof. So that's why we are so excited about these mesh stencils. Um, another reason that we love these mesh stencils and that makes them a little bit different from our regular stencils is that you can get these amazing details. So again, if you guys are familiar with stencils, you have to have bridges in the designs. If there's an A or something, you need to connect that little center shape or else the stencil will fall apart. Um, so with mesh stencils, you don't need any bridges in the designs. It's just a completely open design you can get some of these amazing little details here. Let me show you this pack here. Um, you can get some of these really beautiful thin lines um, and all kinds of amazing little details. So again, another benefit of these amazing mesh stencils that are coming to Michael's in our Folk Art Sign Shop line. Um, so like I said, there's just tons of options. I only have just a few packs here, but there's literally dozens of packs of these mesh stencils. Um, we wanna switch to overhead real quick. Uh, we've got like kitchen signs, bakery and coffee designs. Um, we've got bless our nest um, and really pretty little family designs. And this one comes with a pattern as well for layering. We've got all these really beautiful little like leaf and floral shapes to add to signs um, so just to kind of help embellish them. And um, we've got lots of words. Um, we've got these larger packs today that we'll be using, which have like big alphabets on them. We also have smaller alphabets, but I mean, it's just endless. We have tons and tons of designs, so you can personalize them. Um, you can just use the already made designs to make signs. It's just like the opportunities for making um, signs for your home are absolutely endless. So um, another awesome part of this line um, are the paints that we have. So um, these are called stencil paste. Um, and the reason what makes them special is that they're a little bit thicker. So um, again, we'll get to it in just a minute using the mesh stencils, um, but you wanna have a nice thick um, paint to use with your stencils because it really gets into those cracks and crevices um, and it really helps to grab that detail of the mesh stencil. So we've got some amazing palettes for you guys. We've got the sort of nautical one. We've got these beautiful greens for some of those leaf patterns. Um, again, there's way more than I have here. These are just a, a little a sampling of what we've got. And we also have this um, bigger pack of our stencil paste that shows, um, you can see here, it's all the colors of the rainbow. So you've got every color you could possibly need. And don't forget, you can mix these as well. So if you, there's not a color that you're looking for, or if one kind of matches your home decor, but you know maybe there's a specific color that you want that you don't see, you can mix colors. You can mix any of these colors to get any color you could possibly want. So really, really excited about these beautiful um, color palettes we've selected for you guys. And just before you move on, I just wanna point two things out. Um, the first thing okay. is, Karen mentioned her Michaels did not have these stencils just yet. So she's just gonna watch with us today, which is awesome. Um, okay. And I just want to point out that this product line, the Folk Art Sign Shop, is brand new. It is hitting Michaels as we speak. So um, mm -hmm. you might not notice it in your Michaels today or tomorrow, but it's definitely going to be in your local Michaels within the next few weeks. Yeah. And the second thing I want to say is that we are going to do a giveaway in this uh, class today. So Ooh. in order to enter the giveaway, um, just make <coughs> sure to comment or ask questions throughout uh, Jesse's class today, and then you'll be entered to um, join our little giveaway towards the end. 
Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So um, we've talked about the mesh stencils. Again, there's dozens of beautiful designs. We've spent so much time making these. Um, we just really wanted to, we were thinking of all the kinds of signs that people make. Farmhouse signs, kitchen signs, you know, home signs, personalized name signs, just, you know, things for children's bedrooms, things like that. So we just really wanted to cover all of those designs for you guys. So you had just, you know, so many opportunities to make whatever kind of sign you want. Again, we talked about our amazing um, stencil pastes that were designed specifically to be used with our um, new mesh stencils. And then um, in addition to these beautiful palettes we have with the smaller tubes of stencil paste, we also have um, a couple of larger uh, tubes of them. So we have this in black and white because you, know, you can use this for base coating as well. You can definitely use it for that. Um, but we know that people love black and white signs. That's a huge trend and it's been trending that sort of farmhouse style for years and years and we know it's not going away. So we wanted you to um, be able to have the opportunity to have a larger white and that also comes in black as well, which we're gonna be using today. Um, okay, so now I wanna talk a little bit about the tools that we have for using these mesh stencils. So um, like I said, if you're familiar with regular stencils, you know you would probably use um, a stencil brush. So you would kind of put you know, a little bit of paint on your stencil brush and you would offload it onto your um, paper towel or napkin or whatever you're using. And then you would use a pouncing motion to apply the paint to your stencil. And that's how you keep it from bleeding. Um, but like I said, with these mesh stencils, they're absolutely foolproof. So you do not need to use that specific technique. All you need to do is get the paint on the stencil and you're gonna get a beautiful crisp um, outline and design every single time. So you've got some options for you guys. It kind of depends on your preference and maybe what your project is. Um, so the first option we have are these stencils. You can see I was just doing a red project this morning so that's a little bit stained. Um, but you can see we have these brushes, they're short and they're perfect for spreading paint on our mesh stencils, which don't worry guys, I'm definitely gonna show you guys how to do it. Um, so these are perfect for spreading uh, paint on your stencils. It's great for if you wanted to apply paint to smaller areas, if you wanna do multiple colors on your mesh stencil, which is a really fine um, technique too. So this is your first option, these brushes. Our next option are these um, silicone tipped tools. So these are also great. You can see you're gonna get um, in the pack, you're gonna get an angled one and a flat one. And these are great for sort of pulling down um, and you can go side to side. It's kind of like a fun in between um, for a couple of these other tools that I'm showing you here today. So great, if you really like silicone, these are super easy to clean. Um, they're kind of like a multi-purpose tool because you can use these for tons of stuff. If you're into clay, um, you know, mixing paint, this, can, this is great for just like tons of different crafting. And then your third option is going to be these um, little squeegees. So this is the smallest one you'll get in the pack. You'll get a small, a medium, and a larger one. Um, and if you're familiar with silk screening, this is probably what, something that you're used to. So this is what you would use to sort of pull down your paint um, on your mesh stencil. So just a third option to kind of make it so everyone's really comfortable. You can select whatever kind of tool you want for these mesh stencils. Um, we wanted to give you guys a lot of options. Okay, any questions on the tools, Em? I'm not on the tools, but Emily had a question about the paste. She wanted to know if you're able to make an ombre design with the paste. Oh my gosh, you can absolutely make an ombre design. Um, when we were at Michael's Community Classroom last week, we actually showed you how to do an ombre design. So um, one of our favorite things about Michael's is that they keep all of the recordings of all these classes um, on their website. So make sure to go check that out. It was our last week's sign shop class. Um, and we showed you just, again, we talked even more about all of these beautiful products that we have coming to Michael's. Um, and we did some ombre technique. We showed you how to use all the different tools. So if you love this project, um, make sure to go check that out. Yeah, and then one more question. Um, someone wanted to know, can you use Mod Podge to seal the paint color once you're done? Oh my gosh, absolutely. You can you know, use Mod Podge for any of this. I love that idea. Um, so say you wanted to um, you know, make it waterproof or something like that, or say you wanted to, I don't know, yeah, make just it seal it to paint. protect it. You yeah. can put any of our formulas over this paint and it'll work beautifully with it. Um, it also really works well with our regular full cart paints, which I'm actually gonna show you in a second. So you can use um, all the sign shop uh, mesh stencils and other products in conjunction with any of our full cart um, or Mod Podge or any of our products. Yeah, and then, sorry, one last question. Emily had a no great problem. question. Um, if I make a mistake, can I wipe it off? Like, I guess she wants to know, is the paste permanent? Um, the paste is permanent. Um, it's similar to our multi-surface paints. So once it dries, it's permanent, I should say. So just use it as if you were using one of our multi-service paints. So say I was doing it right on this raw wood and I made a mistake, it might be a little bit hard to wipe off. You might need to do a little bit of sanding. Um, but you know, if I had painted this and then put my mesh stencil over it, you know, you could touch it up with the background color, that kind of thing. 
um, but it is permanent. Like any acrylic paint, um, once it's dry, it's hard, to, it's hard to remove. So just keep that in mind. But again, it's really hard to mess up, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. There, the chances of you messing up are very unlikely. All right, I think we're ready, Jess. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make this sign. Um, I love, love, love this surface. You bought this at Michael's. It's really great for like name signs, for um, family names and things like that. Um, so this one says the Jenkins. We're gonna do a little smaller version today that's gonna say the Smiths. Um, so first I wanna show you guys how I did this awesome stained look. So, you know, stained wood and um, raw wood is super in right now. It's really always in. I don't think, you know, raw wood ever goes out of style, but um, especially for the sort of like farmhouse look. And I know a lot of people think you need to like go to the hardware store and buy wood stain for this, which can sometimes be smelly. Um, you usually have to buy a giant put up of it and you may not need all of that, but a lot of people don't know you can actually stain wood, especially craft wood like this with acrylic paint. So I have this here. Um, this is just regular folk art acrylic paint from Michaels. This is um, real brown. Um, so just regular acrylic paint from Michaels. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that onto my um, plate here. And I'm gonna show you how you can stain this wood with just acrylic paint. Okay, so I've got a little bit of my um, paint here on my plate, and this is a little styrofoam plate. And then I'm actually gonna, I don't need this much paint actually, so I'm gonna scoop a little bit of it off. I'm just gonna put it on my other plate over here. I don't wanna waste any paint. Okay, so then, I'm going to pour a little bit of just regular water onto this um, plate to mix it with my paint. So I'm just going to splash so just regular water from the faucet onto my plate. And, and then what I'm going to do is, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm um, sorry. One person had a question. They wanted to know when was the first class. They'd love to watch it. So, so it should be available on michaels.com under their community classroom page or on Michael's YouTube channel. Them. Yeah, make sure you go check that out because we went into, we just showed you how to use everything. We didn't do a specific project. We just told you all about all the details of the line and people were asking really great questions. So if you want more information about this, um, we do have more classes coming up throughout the month with um, our new sign shop line. So check those out too. But we did do one kind of like intro to sign shop uh, class where we just talked about everything sign shop. All right, so I put a little bit of my brown paint on my styrofoam plate. And then I poured, you can't really see it on camera, but I poured a good bit of water on here and I'm just gonna uh, mix this up. So what we're trying to do right now is to sort of water down our paint. We wanna make sure it's really well combined. So I'm kind of pressing my brush. And again, I'm just using this new sign shop brush, which is just great for mixing as well. You just wanna make sure you get all of the acrylic paint incorporated into the water. You don't want to have any lumps or clumps or anything like that. You want it to be nice and smooth. Put a little bit more acrylic paint. And like I said, this is just a really easy way to get that really beautiful stained wood effect without having to buy wood stain. Because if you're not really like into furniture decor and things like that, you probably don't need a giant can of, you know, wood stain if you're not planning on like redoing your hardwood floors or anything. This is a really fun way to just sort of get that same look in your crafting without having to buy that big um, item. So again, I just wanna make sure I get it all mixed up on there. I don't want any clumps. You can even do this in like a cup or something, like a plastic cup if you wanted to do it in there, totally up to you. You just wanna get, you want it to be nice and watery. And you can always add more if you need to. It's better to start off with more water and keep it kind of light because you can always add more paint to your, um, you know, little faux stain as you go and darken it up, but you won't be able to lighten it, you know, once you start painting onto your wood surface. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good. I've got, it's pretty smooth now. All right, so I'm gonna just get some of that excess out of my brush and I'm gonna start applying it right onto my wood surface. So this is a little bit different brown than this one here, but that just goes to show you, you can use any paint. You could do like a whitewash with the same effect by just mixing um, white paint, acrylic paint with water. You can do like a very, you know, light um, brown or a darker brown, a deeper brown. You can do like sort of like a mahogany look with like a burgundy color. The possibilities are really endless with this technique. So you wanna get nice broad strokes, similar to just how it would be if you were really staining something.
And you can see we get this awesome wood stained effect without, again, without having to buy actual wood stain. And like I said, if you wanted to um, make it darker, you can either use a darker brown or you could add more paint to your mixture and get sort of a more opaque look if that's what you wanted. I really love the way this wood grain is showing through. So this is just perfect for me. I love the way this looks. That looks really awesome. And I love that brush with it too. It like looks like it's really easy to work with. Yeah, do you see how like easily it glides right on? So this is great. This is a great option for the um, sign shop uh, mesh stencils because like I said, in a minute, I'm gonna show you how um, you can use this tool to apply the paint to the stencils, but also you can use it for base coating your surface if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's kind of a multi-purpose tool. Like I was talking about the silicone tool is sort of multi-purpose for your crafting. This one is as well. Yeah, so Jess, while you're doing that, we have a couple questions. Okay. First of all, we have a cute comment. C said, that's such a great idea. They never thought about using their paint to stain before. Awesome. Yeah, and then so someone had a great question. They wanted to know which is better for this technique, a brush or a sponge? Um, I like a brush. A lot of people like painting with sponges. Um, I don't usually use sponges that much unless I'm doing like some sort of like textured look or something like that where I really need the um, texture of the sponge. I prefer a brush, but you probably could use a sponge. Just make sure um, you get it nice and smooth. Um, a lot of people like to apply stains with like a cotton rag or something like a clean cotton rag. So that would work for this technique as well if that's something that you're used to or something that you like to do. There's really, you know, you can really apply this any way that you would apply a stain. So if you wanna do sponges, I, I'm pretty sure that would work. But again, I haven't really tried it. Awesome, so the next question is, um, what would you say the, like if you could estimate the ratio of paint to water that you use is? Hmm, I would say maybe one part paint, three parts water. So a quarter of your mixture should be paint. And again, it depends on how dark you want your faux stain to be. Um, versus how you can make it lighter by adding more water. Um, yeah, it really just depends on the look you're going for, but that's probably a good sort of standard ratio okay. to start you off. And then another question, someone said, um, is this project um, okay for uh, putting in their bathroom due to their shower humidity? I would say it's the same as any other like acrylic paint sign project. Wouldn't you say so, Jess? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if, you know, for some reason, if you take like super hot showers, <laughs> I don't know if you're asking maybe because you've had artwork that got, you know, um, damaged before in your bathroom, you could put some sort of like waterproof um, varnish on this. You could put some outdoor Mod Podge, which is waterproof um, on this, and that would protect it from some of that moisture that's in the air if you're a little bit worried. But yeah, I, don't, I really don't think it would it would have any issue anyway. And then Maria wanted to know, can these signs be used outdoors? Are they, are the paints um, weatherproof? Oh, great question. Well, I kind of just answered it, I guess. Yeah. Um, they're not outdoor safe. So they are multi-surface, um, but they were not designed for outdoor use, but you can easily um, seal them with Mod Podge outdoor, um, which you can buy at Michael's as well. And that will protect it from the elements. Okay. And then Ellen had a really great, great question. They wanted to know, does the stain fade since the paint has been watered down? Does the stain fade? Yeah. Um, like the color of the stain as it dries, yeah. it doesn't really fade. No, no, it shouldn't at all. Um, again, it's just acrylic paint. So it would be like, um, you know, if you were just to paint it on, it wouldn't fade. So however it looks now is really how it's gonna look for, you know, a long time to come. Okay. All right, so I'm just finishing up the edges here before we get started with our mesh stencil, which is the fun part. I know everybody's really excited to see. Yeah, and a lot of people are saying that they're excited to use this um, paste and the stencils, of course, on fabric. So our stencil paste for the sign shop line is multi-surface. Yeah, so you can totally use it on fabric. Yeah. Um, I would not recommend putting it in the washer and dryer. So we always say here at Plaid, of course there are exceptions, but we usually say here, um, if you handmade it, you should hand wash it. Um, but for decorative purposes, like for a tote bag um, or for like a, you know, a pillow, a throw pillow or something like that, um, you can absolutely use the stencil paste and the mesh stencils on fabric. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that. And then one more question. Cheryl wanted to know what's the normal drying time for a stain like this with acrylic paint? Um, so I would leave it if I were just going to let it dry on its own for, you know, maybe an hour. Um, you can really, it, it, since it's such a thin, thin coat of paint because you watered it down so much, it'll dry pretty quick. And also, even if it's like a little bit damp to the touch, you should be able to still use your mesh stencils over it. It shouldn't, you know, really affect it. Um, but I am, just for time's sake, I have a hair dryer here. 
And like I said, just for time's sake, I'm gonna um, make sure we can kind of keep this in, in the hour that Michaels has given us. Um, I'm gonna hit it with a hair dryer before we start adding our mesh stencils. So I'm just cleaning my brush off in just regular water. Make sure I get all the paint out for future use. Here we go. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my hair dryer. Whenever I dry acrylic paint with my hair dryer, I put it on the highest um, like air setting and then I switch between hot and cold. So I'll start with hot and then when I feel like my project is getting a little bit warm, I'll switch over to the cool blast and then kind of back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So that's pretty dry. You can see how quickly this part is like super dry to the touch. Um, you can see how quickly that just dried with the hair dryer. So, you know, if we didn't use a hair dryer, probably 30 minutes and it would be dry. All right, guys. So now it is time to start placing our mesh stencils. So the design I'm going to be using today, um, this is one of our larger packs. Um, so this is um, the 18 inch by six inch stencil pack. So again, there's, there's many different designs in this size um, and we have these large alphabet letters, which are great for sign making, they're perfect. You can see this really cute one here, um, well, hello there on this really pretty round sign. Um, so you can just do all kinds of different things on here. And it's great too, because it's got instructions of, of how to use our reusable mesh stencils um, right here on the back. So like I said, um, I'm going to, so I have a little bit of a smaller surface, I'm going to do the Smiths today. So. Um, what I would do, I've already got them cut out again for time's sake, but I'll show you how I did it. Um, so say I wanted to cut out my O, you do want to remove it because I'll show you here. Um, it is adhesive. So when you pull it off of the back, they do not separate. It comes off in one sheet. So you're going to want to um, sort of split them up before you remove them from the backer, um, just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So say I wanted this O, I would just follow the line and cut out my O just with regular scissors. So Jesse, Vinny said, um, is Mod Podge food safe? So it hasn't been tested to be food safe because there's a lot of requirements that you have to get tested. It is non-toxic, but we can't legally say that it's food safe. And then they said, if not, what would you recommend? They're thinking of using the stencil design on a wooden cutting board or a serving tray. What would you say, Jesse? Maybe like a food safe resin epoxy or something like that? Yeah, you could use a food safe resin or epoxy. Um, again, this this paint technically isn't is not food safe. So I just want to make sure we say that. Um, so you would want to make sure to seal it with some sort of good food safe varnish or sealer, like Emma said. Maybe a food safe resin or epoxy. I know um, those are out there and those are good for cutting boards and stuff. But you know, maybe just use it. Um, you can you can include it on a cutting board. Just don't put it where the food's going to be. So maybe you know include it by the handle and that sort of thing. And just remember when you're using it to never put food um, on that side. Um, for example, we use our multi surface and our enamel paints on mugs and things like that all the time. We're just careful not to put any paint on the inside of the mug or around the um, the rim of the mug where your mouth would be. So we could paint you know designs in the bottom and the center. We just avoid anywhere that your mouth will be touching. So the same would go for. Um, for a cutting board or something like that. Maybe include the design up towards the top or up towards the side or wherever the handle is, if it's that style of cutting board. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so just to show you guys how um, you can um, cut these apart. I, whenever I have stencil like this and I wanna, especially adhesive, when I wanna cut them apart, just to make, my, make it a little bit easier for myself, I'll just keep them in like a little sandwich bag, a little Ziploc bag or something like that. Um, so I have them all together because again, these are reusable. I'm not sure if I said that, but you can use these stencils, even though they are adhesive, you can use them over and over and over. So you wanna make sure to keep them all together. So I went ahead and I cut out the word Smith. So I'll lay it out here just to make sure I have, I always like to lay my stencils out ahead of time just to make sure I do have enough space. 
So the Smiths. Oops. You never want to, you know, eyeball it. And then when you get there with your stencil, you know, it's not like handwriting where you can just kind of make your letters smaller. The size is the size. You want to make sure it fits well. Um, but I have plenty of room here. And then I have room to paint the as well, just like in our original sign. Um, okay, cool. So I have plenty of room. So I know kind of, I have an idea of where I'm going to lay it. And I'm going to show you some good techniques for um, how to place them so that they're perfectly um, level, just like the original sign here. So what I have here in front of me is just some stencil tape. So um, we have this um, folk art stencil tape. Um, you can buy anything like this at Michael's. You can use frog tape or whatever your preference is for tape for while you're painting. So I'm going to pull off a piece that's about the width of my sign. And I'm gonna place it on the bottom here and make sure my tape is level. So you can either do it right up to the bottom to make sure it's level. Um, or you can use it, you know, put it a little bit above just wherever you know you want the bottom of your letters to be. So I'm going to put it about here. And this is going to be my guide for where to place my letters. So I remember here again, I keep laying it out and then picking it back up. Um, we remember here that we want to be about there. So I can see that's a really good, I want to know where I want the, the bottom of each of my letters to be. Not the bottom of the stencil, but the bottom of the letter, because that's the part that we want, want lined up. The bottom of the stencil may not necessarily line up as you can see here. Great. So the, the bottom of the letter is what is important. That's a really great tip, Jesse. It may be something that some people wouldn't think about. Right, it does not necessarily place in the exact same spot each of the letters on the stencil. So it's important to pay attention to the design of the letter itself and not just the square edge of the stencil. So Jesse, so this is a good place. Oh, Go ahead. sorry, real quick, she had a good question about the tape. They wanted to know, could you use washi tape for stenciling? Yeah, you can use washi tape for this. So right now we're not doing any painting. It's not like blocking off, like masking off an area or anything. It's really just for placement sake. So you even could use like a pencil line or something if you want to break out your ruler and draw a line or something. You just need something to use as a guide. So washi tape would work perfectly fine for this. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that I, we see where it is, we know I can see here, I'm lining, gonna line my letters up on the top edge of this tape. So I have a nice little guide here and I know I wanna start right here. So. I can see I have them pretty spaced out how I want them. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. Nothing, nothing is exact just yet. But I can see here at the beginning of that letter, I know exactly where I want to place that stencil when I do eventually stick it down. So I put a piece of tape there. I know that's where I want that stencil to start. And this time I am looking at the edge of the stencil. So I know exactly where to line it up. So that's important to note. So I just take a peek real quick. I put a little bit of stencil tape so I know where to begin. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and get started. I don't need all the stencils laid out together. I'm gonna to start there and just go left to right um, with my word and it should line up perfectly. So again, these are ad adhesive. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the back off. And I'm gonna remember that I'm paying attention to the bottom of my design for this line and the edge of my stencil for this one. So edge of my stencil lined up with the bottom of this. Perfect. And it's great because the design on the stencils are see-through. So you can see here, um, it's probably a little bit hard to see on camera, but there is sort of a mesh material in there. And that's why we call it a mesh stencil. And that is what's holding the stencil together so that you don't need those bridges. And that's why we have these really great designs, these amazing fine detailed um, designs, because we don't need any bridges because it's the mesh that's holding it all together. So I'm going to go ahead and do my M. I think or here, Rose, let's, let's go ahead and just start stenciling so I can show you guys. What'd you say, Em? Sorry, I was going to say, I think Rose is a little nervous. They said, um, when will she put in the the to measure the spacing? Yes, okay, that's a really great question. I should have mentioned that. So I did put the the in because I can make that as small as I want. So you can see here, um, you can make it the same size or you can make a tiny the. So that's why um, I didn't put the the in. We're going to hand paint that part. You could definitely use stencils for that as well. We have some tiny ladder packs. Um, we're just not using them today. So I'm going to hand paint in the the. And that's why I just want to make sure my Smiths, my names um, was spread out and spaced evenly. And then I'm going to put that in later on by hand. So don't stress about that. Okay, well, let's get stenciling. Let's get to the best part. Again, I'm using my larger tube, which is a really great investment to have this because you can make any sort of signs with white letters. Um, or again, this comes in black as well. So I'm going to put a little bit of that onto my plate here. Um, and just something to keep in mind too, if you have a design that's kind of close to the edge, or if you're worried about getting it close to the edge, 
Um, I remember someone said earlier, what happens if you get it off your stencil and uh, you make a mistake? Feel free to put some tape around your design just to kind of like as like a safety net almost. Um, it's pretty easy to manipulate manipulate the paint so that you don't get it over the edge. But if you're feeling a little bit nervous, you know, you can definitely use that safety net and put some tape around it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna use the brush. This is my favorite one. I like I'm a painter, so I feel really comfortable using brushes. So I always like to use this tool for when I'm doing these mesh stencils. So I have the small brush. I'm gonna pick up some paint. And I'm just going to make sure that the entire design is covered in paint. You can see there's no rhyme or reason. I can control it really well, so I don't have to worry about getting, putting it over the edge. And Jesse, someone had a great question that I uh, forgot to address from earlier. They wanted to know, are these stencils reusable? They are reusable. So I'm about to show you guys that right now. So you can see here, I was I didn't have to do that pouncing motion. I didn't do the you notes, know, the pouncing that takes forever, which is how you get those beautiful lines. But watch, I just smeared it on a good bit of paint and we have that beautiful, beautiful um, S. The, the edges are super clear. There's no bleeding ever. Um, it was just a nice, um, a nice really uh, crisp line there. So now my stencil is still wet. This is very important. My stencil is wet. I'm going to put it directly in water. So I have my water basin here. I just went ahead and stuck my stencil directly in there. Because like I showed you before, you have that really fine mesh holding the stencil together. You do not want to let paint dry in it because if you do that, then your stencils will not be reusable anymore. You'll have areas in the mesh stencil where paint has dried and then you will not be able to get paint to go through there later on. You will end up blocking some of the beautiful details in your stencil. So again, I always keep a water basin near me. Um, if you're using some of the larger stencils, the larger science stencils, I'll even keep like a casserole dish of water near me. Um, you know, unless you're by a sink. If I had a sink here, I could just run over the sink and rinse it off gently. Um, but if I'm not near a sink, which I'm usually not when I'm crafting, I'll keep like a big, um, you know, container of water. And as soon as I put the paint on, I put them right into the water and that keeps the paint from drying on the stencil. So again, super important. Make sure you always have water nearby whenever you're using these mesh stencils. Okay, so now that we've got our S placed, uh, we're in good shape for the rest of it. So now we can use our S um, as a guide to place the rest of our letters. So I'm going to do my M here. I want to make sure it's nice and evenly spaced for my S. And then I want to make sure that I have it right at the bottom lined up with our tape that we placed down. And again, make sure it's nice and adhered. It's, like, it's not a super sticky stencil like you may be used to if you're used to adhesive stencils. It's more of a cling. Um, and again, I should say when you put in the water, it does not affect the adhesion. So I hang on to these so I can put my letters back on it, but it doesn't affect the adhesion whatsoever. Once it dries, um, it is perfectly sticky again. Yeah, Jesse, you kind of answered a few people's questions there. Some people had that question if it would um, uh, if it would affect the adhesion of the stencil once you place it in water. Yep. No. What I do is I rinse it off really thoroughly when I'm done with my project, and then um, I'll grab a paper towel or something and I'll just lay them all face down with the sticky side up and let them air dry, which they'll dry really quickly. Um, and then I just stick them right back on the backing and put them into my little bag or wherever I like to keep my stencils. So Jesse, someone asked a little bit ago, um, if they add too much paint to their stencil, uh, will they run the risk of their uh, paste bleeding? And I said, that's the beauty of these mesh stencils. Um, you know, it's really hard to get it to bleed, but Karen made a good point. They have experienced bleeding depending on your surface. If it's uneven or if you're using fabric, um, but these mesh stencils really, really lessen the possibility of your paint bleeding, no matter how, um, uh, no matter how much paint you add to your surface. Yeah, that's really a really good point. Thanks for saying that, Em. Yeah, but you do um, want to just make sure that your stencil is really flush to your surface. Yeah, you do want to make sure, like Emma said, it is flush to your surface. Um, if you have like a very uneven surface, this probably wouldn't work super well on it. It works really well on like nice smooth wood, um, glass, uh, terracotta, things like that that are very smooth is what these stencils are going to work best on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my eye. And I'll show you here, I'll just do a little demonstration. I'll show you here how um, you can put a ton of paint on here and it won't bleed. I'll use one of the other tools. So here, I'll grab the silicone tip tool and I'm gonna put, get, grab a bunch of paint and I'm kind of just kind of smear it. Do you guys see how much paint I just put on there? I just put a ton of paint, you can see on the edges. I like really smeared paint on there. And I'm gonna pull it up and I still have a beautiful crisp line. I, there's no bleeding at all. So just to hopefully that'll answer that question for you guys. These are foolproof, just like I said. If you are if you hate stenciling, 
which I think a lot of people are either stencil lovers or stencil haters, um, this is the product for you because no more bleeding. The stencils are so easy to use. This in water. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do my tea. And so again, I'm just looking at the letter before it. Hang on one sec. I'm looking at the letter before it and I'm looking at my tape on the bottom to make sure that I have it lined up. Um, so before I go ahead and press it down. Sorry, Em, what'd you say? Hey, you're good. Sorry, I feel like I keep interrupting you. No, not at all. I'm happy to answer the questions. That's what we're here for. Yeah, totally. So Barbara um, had a great question earlier. Um, they wanted to know, could you draw a pencil line on the bottom of the letter so you could line it up with the top of the tape? On the bottom of the letter, so you could line up at the top of the tape. I'm not sure I understand the question. I guess they just mean, could you use um, like a, a pencil line instead of the tape? Yeah, you totally could. Like, I think I said that earlier. If you don't have tape, um, you can totally just grab a ruler and draw a pencil line to line it up with instead of having this line of tape. Absolutely, you could. So again, you can see here, I'm really pressing down. I'm making sure that, especially around the design, is all pressed really well. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my stencil paste. You can see how thick this is. It's super thick and creamy, which is why it just like really falls into all the areas of the mesh really well. And that's how we're getting those really pretty crisp designs. And this is kind of a bold um, design as far as these stencils go. A lot of them have like a lot of super duper fine details. So another really awesome, um, uh, benefit of having these is that you can get these you could you know kind of get a similar look with just regular stencils again there would be bridges to help hold them together there would be bridges you know maybe on the h or on the s to help keep it sturdy um but yeah you can't get these fine details on a regular stencil and then here let me just show you i, I cut out a separate s just for time's sake but let me kind of demonstrate to you guys just how you can reuse the stencil so i've got them all in here they're kind of stuck together. Can you see that? But it's okay because they're wet, so they're not going to stick together forever. Um, once I rinse them in the sink, they'll be fine. So I'm going to grab my S from before. I'm going to make sure I don't have any paint in the mesh. And you're just using your fingers to remove that paint. Yeah, I'm just using my fingers. I'm very gently just sort of massaging the stencil. You can do this under running water in your sink or, you know, in your water basin. I'm just making sure I can see it's nice and clear. I can see there's no paint stuck in there, which is good, which is what I'm going for. And let me dry my hand off super quick. I'm making a mess over here, you guys. You don't have to be as messy as I'm being right now. I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff I didn't plan. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hair dry it right now and show you guys just how easy you can reuse them. So again, this is sort of wet. You can kind of, oops, you can kind of blot the top part off, the non-adhesive side, but then the sticky side, I'm gonna dry with my hair dryer. Okay, it's already dry and you can see here, super sticky again. The adhesive side comes right back to life. It did not wash off any of the adhesion. It's just as good as new. You can use it just like you um, pulled it fresh out of the packaging. So I'll show you. I'll line it up right here. Again, make sure you have it all stuck down, which is easy to do because it's still super adhesive. And I'm using my little silicone tool to just really smear some paint in there and pull it off and you have just as crisp of an edge as you did on the first S that we did. That's so you, just to show you guys how super easy they are to reuse. Again, the key is just making sure that you rinse them immediately. So Jess, we have a few questions that I just want you to address really quick. Okay. Cheryl wanted to know, is there any odor to this paint? No, not at all. Um, this paint, just like most of our folk art paints or really all of our folk art paints, I think, um, is non-toxic and water-based. So you can see I'm getting it on my hands. I'm sticking my hands in paint water. Um, it doesn't smell at all because it's water-based. It doesn't have like a solvent base or anything like that. Um, it's very safe to use. Um, it just washes off your hands with soap and water. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no odor to this paint at all. Super safe to use at home. All right. And then um, let's see. C wanted to know, could you add any um, acrylic paint color to the stencil case with those mixed well together? 
Um, I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. I'm not personally mixed together um, our folk art and our stencil paste yet. I haven't mixed these two together. As you can see, I've used them together on a project, of course, um, but I really think they probably would work pretty well. I don't see why not. Um, I mix together different uh, different brands of our acrylic paints all the time. I'll mix, if I'm just, you know, kind of crafting on the fly and I'm using what I have, I'll mix folk art and apple barrel or folk art and, you know, Delta or whatever else. Um, so I, I think they would probably work pretty well together. The yeah. only thing is you don't want to lose, um, while folk art is super um, rich and creamy, you don't want to lose that super thickness of the stencil paste. So maybe just use this as like a, a lesser of the two colors. Like if you want to make a light blue, like just use mostly white of the stencil paste and add like a touch of the blue or something because you really want to keep that super thick body. That's what really, that's what it was formulated for to really get into the um, the mesh of the mesh stencils. So hopefully I, that makes sense. Yeah, and then kind of piggybacking on that, Emily wanted to know what is the difference between this stencil cream or stencil paste and um, our regular folk art acrylic? Yeah, so hopefully that answered your question. You can see here, I'll show you. Our folk art acrylic is super rich and creamy and I'm certain it would work on these. Um, but yeah, the reason that this is special is because it is just extra super thick. You can see here, I can, oh, I have water on this, but I can, you know, flip it upside down and it's not coming off at all. So okay. hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, and then one last question. Um, Jana wanted to know, uh, can you use them on paper or does the adhesive pull, it, uh, pull the paper? Um, these are low tack stencils. So they're a lot less tacky than um, a regular stencil, a regular adhesive stencil. Um, but maybe we would probably recommend to just test it out on a piece of paper before you use it on your normal paper project, just so you don't mess anything up. That's a great idea. Yeah, maybe maybe cut off a little, you know, edge of the stencil so you don't mess it up and then put it on the edge of the paper and kind of really get on there and pull it up and see if it pulls up any of the fibers of the paper. Because I, I would hate for you to put this, you know, whole stencil onto a piece of paper and then pull it up. And if paper tears and, and gets stuck on the stencil, then it'd be hard to get off. I would hate for you to ruin your mesh stencils that way. But again, it is low tack. So depending on your paper, it may work beautifully. So definitely do a test before you do it. All right, cool. Um, okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is just how to paint the the. So again, I don't have any of the smaller um, letter packs in front of me, but we do have letter packs that are in our um, nine inch by six inch size, as opposed to this honkin uh, 18 inch by six inch. So we have smaller letters that you can totally use to do like the the in this um, sign, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hand paint it because I really like this kind of looks hand painted to me. I really like the look of them together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna grab um, just a regular uh, round brush, a little liner brush you, that Michaels has an excellent brush selection to choose from. And I'll show you how I can kind of, you can use the central paste with the brush as well. Oops, I'm gonna pull my tape off. And Jess, um, Steve said maybe watercolor paper would work better than regular, uh, like yeah, great idea. Yeah, like there's definitely papers that are a little bit sturdier than others, like maybe like a like a mixed media paper or something like that. Um, again, Michaels has amazing papers. They have like a whole aisle of different kinds of papers to use. So they're mixed media paper and watercolor paper and drawing paper and just anything you could possibly think of. So um, yeah, just give it a little bit of a test and see how it goes. So just to show you guys that you can use the stencil paste um, with a brush, you might wanna just dip your brush in a little bit of water because again, it is super duper thick and creamy. Um, so just to kind of help it flow, especially when you're doing small lines like this. But yeah, again, you can use a smaller stencil if you don't feel comfortable sort of painting by hand, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys that you can use a brush with the um, stencil cream as well. You don't, you can use it for lots of different kinds of projects. There we go. But yes, I just love the way that you can personalize things. We have them where we have designs where it's kind of laid out so you don't have to personalize it if that's not something that you're interested in. Um, you can do less thinking. It's kind of like a swipe and done sort of sign making, which I know a lot of people will love. Um, but again, we do have lots of options where you can personalize it and make it totally unique to you. This would be amazing for a gift for, you know, a wedding gift or a baby shower to put, you know, the baby's name on it for a nursery. Um, you can just do absolutely anything with these stencils. So um, do we have any questions? Em, any more questions from anybody? 
Yeah, I'll answer some of the chat, but it'd probably be good for you to speak a little bit about it out loud. So Lily wanted to know, she said, that per, that paint works for glass. And then Emily said, would this work on clay pots and then cover it with Mod Podge outdoor? So yes and yes. <laughs> um, so this is a multi-surface paint. So it works on just like is in the name, um, you know, multiple different surfaces. So you can use it on canvas, wood, glass, um, terracotta, metal. It works on any of those surfaces. Um, so all of those great craft surfaces you can buy at Michael's, this will work on. Um, and like I said, you saw how flexible the stencils are. If you wanted to do like a hurricane vase or something like that, you could wrap it on there easily um, and use one of the brushes to, you know, apply the paint. This will work really great on glass. Um, and then for the outdoor question, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. If you wanted to put these on clay pots, I would definitely recommend if you're planning on putting it outside, uh, putting a coat of outdoor Mod Podge on it just to protect it from the elements. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, then somebody said, um, we just you know want to remind everyone again, if you did put your stencil paste on fabric and want to wash it, like Jesse mentioned earlier, we always say at Plaid, if something is um, handmade, then it should also be hand clean. So we would recommend just hand washing that and uh, skipping putting it in the washing machine. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So I think it's time to select yeah. um, a giveaway winner, Emma. So just before Emma picks, well, Emma's selecting randomly um, from the comments. If you win this giveaway, you're going to get some of this product, which is super exciting. You'll be one of the very first people to get your hands on it. Um, and when you win, go on Facebook and go to the Plaid Crafts Facebook page and direct message us and tell us that you won in the Sign Shop Michaels class. Um, and we will get all their information so we can send that product to you. So again, if you win, Go to the Plaid Crafts Facebook page and direct message us and let us know that you are the winner. And drum roll, M. You there, Em? Uh-oh. Emma? She may have froze. I think she got <laughs> right before she picked a winner. I what a cliffhanger. <laughs> All right. Um, Stacey, oh, she's you. Back. Do you want to? Oh, she's back. Okay, good. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a weird time for her to freeze. <laughs> Emily, you're, you're muted, honey. I said, I know, right? The longest drum roll of all time. Sorry for that. My, my internet cut out. <laughs> to put you guys in some suspense. That's all. That was on purpose. <laughs> all right. Now, so go ahead and pick a winner for us. Okay. So our winner for today's class is Franny Cassano. So just like uh, Jesse said, Franny, make sure to check our Facebook page, direct message us, let us know that you won the giveaway for our sign shop, um, Michael's class, and we'll get all your info down and make sure you get those goodies over to you. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Michael's Media Classroom, for having us again. These are our favorite things to do. Um, so check back. We've got tons of classes. We've got past classes to watch on michaels.com. We also have plenty of classes scheduled coming up. So make sure to check out their event listings. Um, and we will be back later this week. Bye, guys.